Hello, 11 11ers. Welcome back from spring break. I hope everybody uh, got refreshed and ready to push through to the end of the semester. Uh, I'll have to say for myself, not so refreshed, but definitely ready for the end of the semester. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started with uh, the lecture. I've got 301 on my computer right now. Um, hoping that some of y'all will join me as I get into the lecture here. If not, that's okay. I can do it. Oh, excuse me. She's good break. Not refreshing. Um, no, uh, if, if nobody comes in, not a big deal. I'll just move through the lecture and hopefully uh, I'll answer your questions uh, that you're not able to ask if you're not here. So we'll go ahead and get moving forward. This is over section 2.4. Okay, so um, the first thing that you encounter in 2.4 is long division of polynomials. And um, the thing that you have to keep in mind is there's a reason we're going through all of this in the middle of trying to graph polynomials. And that is because when you are looking for the x-intercepts of the graph, um, you have to end up factoring uh, the polynomial and using the zero product property to solve. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. This is the first time I've gone all day, and I would have to be on video. Um, so um, we may encounter things that we are not able to factor given the skill set that we have, and that's why it's necessary to know how to do this process. Um, the main reason I'm showing you long division is so that you can see the similarities between this process and the synthetic di division process, and so that you're much thank more thankful for the synthetic division process. Before we get going with dividing this polynomial, I just want to bring to your attention simple long division, just reminding you of the process from back in elementary school. So if we have six divided by 2, we get 3. And that is because 2 goes into 6 3 times. I multiply back down and get 6, and I have a remainder of 0. What this tells me is that 6 is equal to 2 times 3. And since there are no remainders there, or there's no remainder there, that means 2 and 3 are both factors of 6. Let's look at a similar issue. 7 divided by 2 is 3, and it has a remainder of 1. Let me show you this long division-wise. 2 goes into 7 3 times. 3 times 2 is 6. I have a remainder of 1. The meaning of this is that 7 is equal to, I can write this one of two ways, either 2 times 3, so my uh, divisor times my quotient plus my remainder, or you may remember from doing long division that you can write your remainder as remainder over divisor, and it becomes part of the factor. So that would say that 7 is equal to 2 times 3 plus 1 half um, inside the parentheses, because 2 times 3 and a half is 7. Or 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So I just wanted to remind you of that process of long division, because you use the same type of process uh, to divide polynomials. A little scarier looking, but it's the same concept. Um, now, the most important part for you to be aware of is the interpretation of your results. So this right here. 
either of those. Also, with this right here, the fact that since you have no remainder, that both 2 and 3 are factors. So your, your divisor and your quotient are factors when there's no remainder. Those are the important things that you need to pay attention to that are going to be helpful to you in this process of uh, graphic polynomials. I am so sorry, you guys. And I've, I, let me drink some more coffee. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I'm still drinking coffee after 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's from this morning, so it's hot black, I mean cold black coffee. Apparently, I need more of it because uh, I'm not functioning. Well, I think my brain's still on spring break. All right. So, let's look at the long division process. And um, I'll write the steps out to the side as I go through it. So, I want to divide this polynomial x squared plus 10x plus 21 by x plus 3. So, my divisor is x plus 3. And my dividend is x squared plus 10x plus 21. And let me call your attention to the fact that if you skip over a term standard form-wise, so say the polynomial that I was dividing was x cubed minus 8. I would not write that as my dividend. I would need to put placeholders. And this goes for whether you're using long division or synthetic division. What I'd actually write there is x, I'm sorry, x cubed. The pen was acting up on me. Let me start over here. Okay, so how I would actually write that dividend would be x cubed plus 0x squares plus zero x's minus eight. You've got to have placeholders. Just like with place value with just numbers, you have to hold those spaces with zeros. You've got to do the same thing with terms that don't show up in your polynomial. This particular case that we're looking at does not have to have placeholders because we go from x squared all the way down without skipping over any spaces. Um, or any term places all the way down to the constant term. So we're good to go there and to begin the division process. So I'm just going to erase this at the top so I have room to write the steps as I go through. So just like with regular division, your first step is estimation. And I'm going to give you the tip of focusing on first terms. So there's my first term and there's my first term. That's what you're focusing on right now. And you want to estimate, what would I have to multiply x by to make x squared? Well, that is x, and it needs to go in the appropriate column. This is why you have to have the placeholders. So it's x in the x column. Just like with long division, my second step is to multiply down. So I'm going to multiply there and there. x times x is x squared. x times positive 3 is positive 3x. Well, my next step is to subtract, just like with regular long division. However, we never subtract polynomials. We add the opposites. So let me show you what that looks like, and then I'll show you what I normally see. I'm wanting to subtract this entire polynomial. So if I distributed that negative 1 to each of these terms, it would change the signs of both of those. So that's what we do. We add the opposite or change the signs of our polynomial. So this is what I usually see students, how I see students write this. They go, okay, well, I have changed that sign. 
and change that sound wave to become negative. If it's already negative, it becomes positive. And then you combine down. So I'm going to put over here, this is also change sign, and combine. Okay, so the first thing that you'll probably notice is that when you combine down, these first two terms are opposites of each other. That will always happen if you've done it correctly. And then your next two terms will combine to give you a new term. So 10x minus 3x is 7x. Then just like we're used to seeing with long division, you bring down the next term. So let me write that step over there. Your fourth step is bring down. So that's a positive 21. Your last step is to repeat as needed until you're finished. So I'm going to go back up to the first step, and I'm going to focus on first terms. So I'm looking here and here now. What do I have to multiply x by to make 7x? That is positive 7. Multiply back down, 7 times x is 7x, 7, 7 times 3 is positive 21. Change signs because you're subtracting. Goes away, goes away, I have a remainder of 0. Here's the important part. It is in the interpretation of what you have just figured out. So, I have, there's the meaning. I'm going to star it. Once again, this is the important part. The meaning is that that original polynomial x squared plus 10x plus 21 is equal to x plus 3 times x plus 7. There's no remainder, which means the divisor and the quotient are factors of the polynomial, the original polynomial. And you could go and factor that with our regular factoring techniques and see that it comes out to be the same thing, whether the factors of 21 that I had to make 10, 3 and 7, x plus 3, x plus 7. So, first important thing, when there is no remainder, the quotient and the divisor are factors of the dividend or the original polynomial. Okay? So this is another way of factoring. And that's what you're doing when you're factoring. You're asking yourself, what did I have to multiply together to make that thing? That's addition. All right. So let's look at this next one. It's a little more involved, but not too much. Okay, so we have 3x minus 2 going into, okay, I can't write it in this form here. It is not in standard form. It's got to be in standard form to be able to do the division. 6x cubed minus x squared minus 5x plus 4. I didn't skip over any spaces, so I didn't need to put a zero placeholder there, or a zero term holder. All right, I'm ready to begin the division process. So I'm going to focus on first terms. What do I have to multiply 3x by to get 6x? x cubed, that is 2x squared, multiply back down 2x squared times 3x is 6x cubed, 2x squared times negative 2 is negative 4x squared, come back and change your sign, 
because it's subtraction, and combine down. My first terms drop off because they'll always be opposites. You have formulated it to be that way. Negative x squared and positive 4x squared is positive 3x squared. And now I'm ready to bring my next term down, which is negative 5x. And I am back to focusing on first terms. What do I have to multiply 3x by to get 3x squared? That is simply a positive x. Multiply back down. x times 3x is 3x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Change your signs. And combine down. Opposite. Negative 5x, positive 2x is negative 3x. Last one, bring down. And I have negative 3x plus 4. What do I need to multiply 3x by to make negative 3x? That is negative 1. Negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Change my signs. Combine down. And I have a remainder this time. So my first two terms drop out. Positive 4 and negative 2 leaves me with positive 2. So I have a remainder of 2. Here's the important part, the interpretation. By the way, because there is a remainder, 3x minus 2 is not a factor. Neither is 2x squared plus x minus 1. Your divisor nor your quotient are factors if you are left with a remainder. This is what it means. You can write it one of two ways. It either means f of x, meaning our original polynomial there, is equal to my divisor times, oops, times my quotient. And acting up again, 2x squared plus x minus 1 plus on the outside my remainder. Just this, this particular way of writing it models that way of writing. 7 is equal to 2 times 3 plus 1. I could also write it the other way you see there and say my original polynomial is equal to my divisor times my quotient including my remainder over my divisor. So I have a positive 2 over my divisor, 3x minus 2. These are the same exact thing. So this one right here is an example of writing 7 that way. Um, it's always remainder over divisor as your last term there. And notice it's inside the parentheses because it would get multiplied too if you multiplied all these things back out. Um, and that is one division of polynomials. So your steps are off to the side there. It's the same steps that you'd use if you were just doing long division with numbers. The things that you have to remember are how to interpret your results. And secondly, that if you skip over a term place, you've got to put a zero term placeholder in there before you begin your division process. Let's move forward. So um, the division algorithm says my polynomial is equal to my divisor polynomial 
times my quotient polynomial plus my remainder polynomial, or, I, and that would be the 7 equals 3 times 2 plus 1, or it says it's my divisor polynomial multiplied with my quotient polynomial that contains my remainder over my divisor. Okay, so that's the other way that that can be written. This one is really more useful than the other one. But you need to know how to do both because my math lab will ask you to write your answers that way sometimes. All right, uh, let's move on to looking at the difference between doing uh, or dividing a polynomial with long division, and then I'll show you the synthetic division process, and hopefully you'll begin to see the similarities between the two of them. Okay, so I'm going to divide x cubed plus 4x squared minus 5x plus 5 by x minus 3. And I'm going to run through my steps. So I focus on first terms. What do I need to multiply x by to make x cubed? That is x squared. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared. x cubed. x squared times negative 3 is negative 3. x squared. Change my sign. And combine down. First two. Uh, First terms are opposites and drop off. 4x squared plus 3x squared is 7x squared. Bring down negative 5x. Focusing on first terms, what do I need to multiply x by to make 7x squared? That is positive 7x. Multiply back down. 7x times x is 7x squared. 7x times negative 3 is negative 21x. Change my signs. And combine down. Bring down. Or I need to multiply x by to make 16x. Positive 16. Six time, 16 times x is 16x. 16 times negative 3 is negative 48. Change my signs. Combine down, and that is 53. So I can either say, and this is the most useful one, f of x is equal to x minus 3 times x squared plus 7x plus 16 plus 53. By the way, neither x minus 3 nor x squared plus 7x plus 16 are factors of x cubed plus 4x squared minus 5x plus 5. Or I can say f of x is equal to x minus 3 times x squared plus 7x plus 16 plus 53 over x minus 3. All right, I'm going to show you that same problem using synthetic division. I'll do it first, and then I'll go back and explain what I did. Okay, I'm ready to go. All right, so give you a moment to look at that. Uh, hopefully, you notice that all I've done is dealt with the coefficient. And in actuality, all you do with long division is deal with the coefficient. The variables are there just for placeholders. So I have set this up so that 
my divisor always comes in the form of x minus c. So since we had x minus 3, my c value is 3. Minus is in the form. So if it had been x plus 3, I would have divided by negative 3 because that's the same thing as x minus negative 3. So my c is from x minus c. My first line are the coefficients of my original polynomial, my dividend. And here's the process. Combine down. 2. Multiply. Result with C. Write product in next column. Welcome, Dave. And four, repeat to the end. Your last value, we always square it off because your last value is always going to be your remainder. So I'll put that on there. Last value is your remainder. All right, so let me show you what this says to you. Let me grab a different color here. It says that my original polynomial, which is 1x cubed plus 4x squared minus 5x plus 5. So my original polynomial, x cubed plus 4x squared minus 5x plus 5 is equal to my divisor, which remember it comes in the form of x minus c. So my divisor times my quotient. I started out with a cubic. I took a factor of x out, so this is going to always go down by one factor of x, so I'm left with x squared plus 7x plus 16 x squared plus 7x plus 16 plus my remainder, 53. So um, that is synthetic division, very quick. And uh, we know here that neither of these are, are factors of the original polynomial. Um, and it's a lot quicker and more and simpler than, than the long division is. And you can see you get the same results. You get the same results either way. It does not matter. All right, let's move forward and hopefully Dave you'll you'll pick up on this as we as we move through. Okay, so the steps for synthetic division. Arrange the polynomial in descending powers with a zero coefficient for any missing terms. That's your placeholders that you need to put in there if you need one. Um, write C for the divisor, X minus C. To the right, write the coefficients of the dividend. Combine down, multiply C by the bottom value, write the result on the second row below the next coefficient. Combine down, multiply, write the value, repeat until everything's filled up. There's the most important part, and that is interpreting your results. You can write it either way. 
um, what does it mean if there's no remainder? If there's no remainder, that means the divisor and the quotient are factors of the polynomial, f of x. What are the graphical implications of having no remainder? Well, if you're pulling factors out of that thing, you can use the zero product property to find the x-intercept. That's why we're studying this, so that you can start pulling those x-intercepts out of polynomials that were previously not factorable for you because of the method of factoring that methods of factoring that we haven't studied. So this is the way you start whittling down that polynomial to get it to either a quadratic that's easy to factor or use the quadratic formula with. Okay, so um, we're asked to solve this particular equation given that 3 is a 0 of the polynomial. So um, let me kind of work backwards with this. When, when we have that 3 is a 0, that means after we did the zero product property, we ended up with x equals 3. That came from us doing the zero product property, which said x minus 3 equals 0. So what I know when I'm told 3 is a 0, I automatically know that one of the factors of this polynomial is x minus 3. So if I can get that out of there, this is a cubic, and so if I take that factor of x out, I'll be left with a quadratic that I can then either factor and use the zero product property to solve, or I can use a quadratic formula to solve. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get that factor of x minus 3 out of there. So just as a reminder, when you are setting up your synthetic division process, C comes from X minus C. So you don't want to have the minus in there. So I'm just going to use the 3 from X minus 3. So 3 is on the outside as my divisor. The coefficients of my polynomial are 2, negative 3, negative 11, and 6. I didn't skip any, so I don't need to put any zeros to hold that place. I combine down, multiply with C, so 3 times 2 is 6, write my result in the next column. Combine down, negative 3 and 6 make 3, multiply with C, 3 times 3, write my result in the next column, right there, 9. Negative 11 and 9 is negative 2, multiply with C, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, and combine down and I get 0. That says that my divisor and my quotient are factors because I have no remainder. Just like 6 equals 2 times 3, no remainder, 2 and 3 are factors of 6. So here, so far, I have figured out that my original polynomial f of x, which is 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 11x plus 6, is equal to my divisor, which is x minus 3, times my quotient. I have to go down 1 in degree since I factored out a factor of x, so this is 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. I can factor that and use the zero product property to solve, or I could put the quadratic into the quadratic formula to solve for it. So I have my first factor here in the zero product property. That would be x minus 3 equals 0. And then I have 2x squared 
plus 3x minus 2 equals 0. I'll factor this off to the side just to remind you of how to factor using the AC method for a quadratic trinomial. So 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. To factor this, I multiply A by C and I get negative 4. I'm looking for what multiplies to make negative 4 but adds to make B, which is 3. And that would be 4 and negative 1. I rewrite my polynomial. 2x squared, I don't write plus 3x. I use the factors that I found there, plus 4x minus 1x plus 6. No, I'm sorry, minus 2. Looking at the wrong thing there. Minus 2. And then I use grouping to finish it off. So I split it down the center. My GCF is 2x here. When I take that out, I am left over with x plus 2. GCF, the second side, negative 1. And I'm left over with x plus 2. So that factor says x plus 2 times 2x minus 1. So here I have, this is x plus 2. I'm trying to keep this color coded, times 2x minus 1. And that all equals 0. So I can apply the zero product property there as well and get that x plus 2 equals 0 and 2x minus 1 equals 0. So finishing everything off, x minus 3 equals 0, so x equals 3, which we were already given in the problem. We also have x equals negative 2, and x equals 1 half. So the solutions, which are also the x-intercept, if you're graphing this thing, once again, that's why we're learning how to do all this, so that you can identify those x-intercepts when it comes time to graph. And when I get done with this particular problem, I'll show you how that would translate to the graph, how useful this skill is. So my solutions are negative 2, 1 half, and 3. In regards to your graph, the first step is to identify the end behavior. The end behavior is based on the first term, the leading term. 2x cubed is a positive odd, which means that tail ends fall left and rise right, just like a positive line. The second step in the process is to find your x-intercept. I already know them because I've done all the work there. I've solved the equation or the, yeah, the equation for when I plug in 0 for y or 0 for f of x. So my x-intercepts are negative 2, 1 half, and 3. The multiplicity is how many times those factors show up. And you can see I have one factor of x minus 3 one factor of x plus 2, and one factor of 2x minus 1. So each of those multiplicities are 1, which means it completely crosses there. It's all stuff from 2.3. And finally, I look for my y-intercept. That's what you get when you plug in 0 for x, so f of 0 
Well, it's always going to be your A sub 0. Look up here at the polynomial. If I plug in 0 for x, that term's going to go away, that term's going to go away, that term's going to go away, and you'll always be left with your constant term. If you don't see a constant term show up, that means it's 0, which means you're also going to have an x-intercept of 0. So when I plug in 0 there, I have 2 times 0 cubed minus 3 times 0 squared minus 11 times 0 plus 6, which is just 6. So that's my y-intercept. And I'm going to have to erase a little bit to show you what this looks like on the graph. Because we can go ahead and graph with the information that we have. I'm just going to delete that, make room, the graph, there we go. Not that it asks us to, but I want to show you the reason why we're doing all this. One, two, three, one, two, three. I have x-intercepts at negative 2, 1 half, and 3. My in behavior says it goes off to negative infinity to the left and positive infinity to the right. Because they each had a multiplicity of 1, it completely crosses at each of those x-intercepts. And I have a y-intercept of 6, so I can go ahead and mark that on my graph. And this is what this graph looks like. Completely cross, go through, completely cross, and come on back up. Your high and lows, your maxes and your mins, that's calculus. That's what your calculator's for, to find those maxes and mins there. How was that, Dave? <laughs> Uh-oh, Dave's typing a lot. <laughs> Brain is still stuck on last week. I said that at the beginning of this. I was yawning, like, for the first five minutes of the video, and I was like, oh, my brain is still in spring break. Um, <laughs> hopefully it'll make a little more sense when you go back and watch the video and, and walk through the process of long division and synthetic division. But it's the, the whole reason behind it is so that you can identify those x-intercepts. Oh, there's the odd again. Ah, okay, we have one more slide left. <laughs> we can make it, I promise. Okay, so a very cool thing that happens to come about with synthetic division is the remainder theorem. The remainder theorem says that your R of X, or your, the remainder, I'm sorry, no, R of X, just your R value. So just that value that you're left over with when you divide is the same thing that you get when you plug C in to the function. So F of C is R. It gives you your remainder. And I'll show you both ways so this will make sense here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is literally plug 4 into the function so you can see what we're supposed to get. So F of 4 is equal to 2 times 4 cubed minus, oh, I might have to grab my calculator on this one, especially with my brain functioning the way it is today. All right, so this is 2 times 64 minus 11 times 16 plus 28 minus 5. 2 times 64 is 128. I have no idea what 11 times 16 is. <laughs> and I don't feel like thinking about it, so yes, I'm grabbing my calculator. 11 times 16 is 176 plus 28. Minus 5, and when we do this math, 
128 minus 176, 128 minus 176 plus 28 minus 5, I get negative 25. Okay, so that is what we get when we evaluate the function for 4. Let me show you the coolest thing that makes this so quick and easy. If I use synthetic division and use my x value as my c, my remainder is going to show up as what I get when I plug that in. So here's what that looks like. Much quicker, much nicer. So combine down, multiply, write your result. Combine down, multiply, write your result. Combine down, multiply, write your result, combine down, and you get the same thing. Your remainder is what you get when you plug the C value in, into the function to evaluate. What this also means is that the point for negative 25 lives on the function. And it's obviously not an x-intercept because we got a remainder. And we know 4, negative 25 doesn't lie on the x-axis, so it's not an x-intercept. All right, I'll do this. Is that OK, Dave? Does that make sense? It's kind of cool in my nerdy world. Excellent. All right, so this last one, here's where we're going to have to use placeholders. Notice. I go from x to the fourth to x squared. I've got no x cubed between. So I would rewrite this function as 4x to the fourth plus 0x cubed. You've got to have those placeholders when you're doing synthetic or long division with polynomials. Minus 4x squared plus 6x, here's another placeholder, plus 0. You've got to take it all the way down to the constant. So I'm going to go ahead and use synthetic division to evaluate this function at 4. So 4, 4, 0, negative 4, 6, and 0. Combine down, multiply, write your result. Combine down, multiply, write your result. Combine down, multiply, write your result. Combine down, ooh, multiply, 246 times 4 is 984. And, oops, 984, that is F of C. So when I plug that thing in, that's what I'm going to get out. And you can check it with your fraction calculator by putting it into the y equals function and um, just looking at the table when x is equal to 4. That means the point 4, 984, is on the, the graph of that function. How is that? At least the ending part. <laughs> Excellent, Dave. All right, I've got one more slide just to let you all know about what's coming up here. So unit 5 is 2.4, 2.5, and 2.6. Homework and quiz for this particular unit are due Monday, April the 14th. So you have two weeks. Um, quiz will be open the preceding uh, Thursday, as it always is. The next lecture tomorrow, note the time change. The next lecture is tomorrow at 8 a.m. I have an appointment in the afternoon, so I need to do an early lecture tomorrow. And also don't forget, Fall early bird registration opens Monday, April 7th. You had to have an early bird advising appointment to be able to register then. If you did not complete an early bird advising appointment, you have to wait until Monday the 14th to register. That's when it opens for everybody. Dave, thanks for coming in here today. Let's see your type in something. Very good. Have a wonderful afternoon, and I'll get this posted ASAP.